Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we'd like to look at 1 Peter chapter 5 today. We'll be finishing the book of 1 Peter, the book that is on uh, talking much about persecution and remembering that Peter gave his life for the Lord through being crucified and uh, that upside down because he asked him to do that. Uh, and we have today in our world lots of persecution of Christians. But here in the West, it is kept very, very secret. And that's, that's unfortunate, very unfortunate. In fact, it's almost uh, disdained for Christians to say much about persecution in their churches. And I think so often they just want to stick their head in the sand like an ostrich and pretend like it never happened in the past, as never happened in the Middle Ages, and is not happening now. And so they're thinking of their lives as well. Uh, it's almost like, and you get saved, it's heaven on earth uh, before you get to heaven, and then you get to heaven, then you get the icing on the cake. I'm sorry, that is not Christianity. That is not what the Bible teaches. And I, I don't even see you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm telling you that that is not what the Bible says at all. And we need to get to the truth of the Word of God and stop pretending and stop being deceived. Wake up as Christians and realize the times that we're living in the times that we did live in and not be stopping the word about Christian suffering in different places of the world and being persecuted. The Bible says they that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That means that maybe some people that think they're living godly lives are not living godly lives. And they're not even, in some cases, true Christians. I don't know what they have, it's some kind of club or something. And, oh, well, this is your best life now, and that sort of thing. That is not the Word of God. That's not what it teaches. And we're going to see that as we look at the first uh, Peter chapter 5 today. So I pray that you will stick with me and not be. Uh, I can see probably people and India and Pakistan wanting to listen and other uh, communist countries or Muslim countries because they know what I'm talking about is true. But here in the United States and in uh, parts of Europe, well, especially now in the United States because it's still kind of rosy even though we see uh, persecution probably on the horizon, which I really believe that it is coming to the United States as well as other parts of the world. And God probably has allowed us, I'm just surmising here, that God has allowed us to have this prosperity that we've had so far so we can help the other nations of the world. But if we don't have a true picture of what's going on, then we need, we'll fall short of what God intended for us, and even in helping of other nations. So I want you to, uh, as we say, buckle your seat belts and get ready because we want to see what the Word of God really says. We want to hear uh, what we should really do as Christians in this time of suffering that is going play, uh taking place in the world and will even more so in the, the last of the last days that we're looking at before the church is taken out again. Uh, this is the biggest argument against uh, people that, uh, the people who do not believe in the rapture of the church or at least the, the church being, being taken out before the tribulation, they say, Oh, see, you, you think that you're just going to get out of persecution. Uh, no, 
the Bible says that they who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That has happened in the past in the church. That's happened in the Middle Ages, and it's happening around the world now for Christians. Even though the rapture has not taken place, uh, it is happening now. It's a, We expect it. And so just because God is dealing with the church differently than he does with Israel, Israel has seven years of persecution, or well, I'll say it this way, seven years of trouble, Jacob's trouble is still to come on Israel. That is not for the church. The church is going to be ruptured out and uh, but before that time there is a lot of persecution and we will see that so let's go ahead with uh first peter with that introduction first peter chapter five so i exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of christ who was our example Good morning, Esther, from India there. The Lord bless you, sister. Okay, so Christ is our example. Now, Peter is a fellow elder, a leader in the church, but he just uh, lumps himself with the others. He doesn't think of himself, well, I am the apostle of Jesus that... Uh, which he is, and he was with Jesus for three and a half years. Uh, but the thing is, he doesn't emphasize that. He says, I'm just one with you, okay? And a witness of the sufferings of Christ. I saw, he saw uh, from a distance uh, because he denied the Lord at that point, but came back later and the Lord forgave him. And he did see the sufferings of Christ as well as a partaker and the glory that is going to be revealed. So the suffering is for a reason, uh, to take care of our sin problem. That's why Jesus came the first time, to take care of our sin problem, be our savior. And then the glory would be revealed in the future for not only Christ, but for us. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight. Shepherds is different than, uh, you know, like uh, hmm, uh, a boss or something. That's not what it says. We're not bosses. We're shepherds. And shepherds, you tenderly take care of the sheep. Make sure they get the food they need from the word of God. Make sure they get the water of the Holy Spirit, make sure they get the oil to anoint the sicknesses and so on. That is among you, exercising oversight, all right? Not under compulsion, not because you have to, all right? But because you want to. Hello, Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel. So good to see that you're on there. And so you're one of these that they're talking about, an elder and exercising oversight, not under compulsion. In other words, that you don't do it because you have to, compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. You, you love doing that. You're, you thank you, God, for choosing me to do these things. God would have you not for shameful gain. Some today in the United States, and I'm sorry to say, they're pastors because they want to make money. Uh, they're evangelists because they want to make money. That's shameful. That's wrong. That's not what the gospel is about. But eagerly, not domineering, and so not thinking, well, I'll take advantage of these people and I will be authority over them. No, you're a shepherd. And Jesus is the chief shepherd over those in your charge. Be careful. But being examples to the flock. How do you lead? 
by example, all right? Just like Christ did for the apostles, okay? He was an example to them. He suffered in front of them. He was maligned, made fun of. And when the chief shepherd, Jesus, appears, Yeshua, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. All right, this thing, these things are just temporary. All right, and uh, we'll just talk about this a little bit. And um, I just got a report uh, from a place in India that there's persecution going on, a real severe persecution going on of Christians there and their homes and cars being destroyed, their churches, church buildings, and uh, then themselves being suffering for the Lord. And uh, even if the, the worldly media and television and social media doesn't talk about these things very often we will and we will give you more reports as we hear in more detail so you know that this is going on i'm ashamed of my brothers and sisters in christ here so often in the united states i've been stopped at least twice in churches from sharing about what has gone on in the past and what uh, is expected as christian and uh, so, but we continue, I will continue to share the truth of the Word of God and that suffering is for, happens to Christians today, even as it did in the early church, and uh, to realize that we're not to be ashamed of those. In fact, we should be proud of those that suffer for the Lord. And the world looks at it as, oh, it's a tragedy. Uh, no, it's not really a tragedy for us as believers, especially those who are suffering. They will be rewarded in heaven. There is two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness, darkness in this world and the kingdom of light. We are in the kingdom of light. Those are the uh, kingdom of darkness want to persecute Christians. They want to uh, get rid of them. They want to silence them uh, because Satan is behind that. And if you can't see that, uh, Muslim friends, if you can't see that, Hindus, if you can't see that, Buddhists, if you can't see that, atheists, then you are short-sighted and you are not logical you are not really looking at the truth and you need to look at the truth and see that god is allowing things but the christians are still serving the lord and still loving their enemies and those that spitefully use them they will pray for them huh. does that happen uh to Muslims and other religions, is that the way they treat people when they're attacked and so on? Probably not. Okay, so look at the truth, all right? And it says that uh, over those in charge of you, but being examples to the flock, and when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Uh, at that time, if they were running in the Olympics or something and they got a, a crown, it was a, a reef, uh, was a, made out of leaves and that sort of thing. Well, that's going to fade away. But the crown that God is going to give you that are suffering for him is a crown of glory that will not fade away. Likewise, you who are younger, okay, if you're not elders in the church or leaders in the church be subject to the elders clothe yourselves all of you with humility toward one another so this humbly walk before one another showing forth christ's love to people 
For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Okay, so in God's kingdom, it's just the opposite of the world's kingdom and uh, Satan's kingdom. And the world's kingdom and Satan's kingdom uh, build yourself up. In fact, they, uh, the way they look at it is step on others till you can get up to the top. And when I was a child, we have, had a game, King of the Mountain. And so you would push the others aside and, and where there was a hill and you try to get up the top and show them that you were the best and that you were the greatest and so on. King of the mountain, we would say. Well, that's the, Satan's kingdom. That's his, the kingdom of darkness. That's the way they do it. Uh, <clears throat> don't worry about your family. Don't worry about others. Put yourselves first. Well, no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the opposite for us as Christians. Put others first. There's the song, and I've shared this before, Jesus, others, and you. Okay, and so uh, there's a acrostic. If you write it vertically, vertically uh, you put a J at the top, and that stands for Jesus. And then you put O for others, and then you put a Y and you spell joy, J-O-Y, Jesus, others, and you. All right, so we need to put Jesus first and then others and then ourself. I have, even have to correct people with their English because they'll say, me and Tom. Well, it's not me and Tom, it's actually Tom and I are, Tom and me, I suppose you could say that, but you put your, and I have to explain to him, you put the other person first, even in English when we're speaking, that's the way we say it. A lot of people don't know that because they haven't studied English that well, but you always put the other person first and yourself second or last, because really Jesus should be first, Jesus, others, and you. <clears throat> And the song goes on. Uh, Jesus, others, and you. What a wonderful way to spell joy. Jesus, and others, and you. And the life of each girl and each boy. J is for Jesus, for he has first place. O is for others, we meet face to face. Why is for you, and whatever you do, put yourself last and spell joy. Now, I'm not much of a singer, but I wanted you to see that. So it's Jesus, others, and you. All right, let's go to uh, on here as we're studying this. And so put others before yourself, okay? And then it's talking about that, uh, so clothe yourselves, all of you, uh, with humility. Moses was the most humblest person that ever lived, the Bible said, up till the time that Jesus came along. Then Jesus was the most humblest person that ever lived. Can you imagine that, the God of the universe, being so humble, all right? And that's the way he was when he came the first time. Toward one another, that's the way we're supposed to be. Thinking of the other person more than ourselves. Putting them before ourselves. For God opposes the proud. God hates pride. That's where Satan started. He said, I will be like the Most High God, and so on. And five times in first, in Isaiah chapter 14, Ezekiel uh, 28, there, he talks about himself. That's where he fell because he became proud. Pride goes uh, before fall and hot. The haughty spirit and, and pride go together, but they will cause a fall in your life, the scripture says. Okay, toward one another, 
and for God opposes the proud. He hates pride. What should we be proud of? He created us. Our breath is in his hands. Everything about us he designed and made. What are we to be proud of other than pride in the cross? That's what Paul said. But give grace to the humble. So God gives grace to the humble. We're to walk humbly before the Lord. What does the God What does God require of you? Uh, to love mercy and uh, justice and to walk humbly with your God. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Yes, one day in heaven he will reward you for living for him. But now don't even think about that, really, just uh, other than to realize that that's true. But we're not living for the rewards of the crowns. We're living for Jesus and showing our love to him and following his example, casting all your anxieties, all your worries, all your cares on him because he cares for you. In Philippians, it talks about that too. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. If you have worries or if you're anxious about things, pray and uh, about it. And so put all your anxieties on him, all your worries, all your concerns on him because he cares for you. So he says that he will, uh, says that uh, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, Jesus says. Uh, come learn of me. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Now, how in the world could you be sober-minded and drinking and uh, taking drugs or anything? You can't. But here also it means to be serious-minded, knowing that uh, your redemption draweth nigh, that it is almost the time for Jesus to take the church out to be with him. But before that time, there will be persecution. There will be hardships. There will be trials in our lives. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Okay. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Okay, I'm told that uh, a lion, when it's hungry, is roaring. Well, that's the way Satan is and the demons. They love destroying Christians. They love seeing Christians persecuted. And uh, somehow there's something they, they get out of that because they know they can't get back at God for his judging of them, casting them out of heaven and bringing them down low. But the thing is, they so where do they go? To the ones that God loves to his children and then tries to hurt them. We've talked about that before. One of the worst things in persecution and suffering is when you have to see your family suffer, your children, your loved ones. And of course, the, Satan knows that too. And uh, he will do everything he can to make Christians suffer. He wants to do that. And uh, somehow he thinks he's winning, I think, when uh, more Christians that he can kill and stop the message of the gospel. But I've got news for him. Everything that he does to persecute Christians will backfire. In other words, um, what he does will turn out to be for our good and God's glory. It's like um, in the Columbine uh, attack in the United States uh, quite a few years ago now. There was, in a high school, there was two students that attacked through 
Well, actually, there's a, a movie on it, uh, and a book, books written and so on. But they attacked a high school with uh, bombs, and so the bombs didn't all go, and they didn't really go off, but they had uh, automatic weapons and so on and other things. Uh, but at one point, they told one girl, are you still going to be a Christian? And he's pointing a gun at her head, and she said, you know that I will be, and there was a person there that saw that happen. And uh, and so they shot her right in the head, well, and killed her. But the thing is, they, as a result of that, the, the father has gone around the world and speaking, and he came to the high school where um, my wife was in public school and the high school and spoke to the, and, uh, and, uh, a rally or the uh, assembly and uh, many of the kids were listening but I know uh, according to the film that even when the one that I saw the movie and so on afterwards it said that there was millions of people and I forget how many million at that point had received the Lord do you think because of this girl's testimony do you think Satan is winning when he does that, no, he's losing. He thinks he's winning, but he will lose. And more and more people get saved when they do hear about persecution and what is going on around the world. And so we need to get the word out, people. Uh, those are our brothers and sisters who are dying for the Lord and suffering for the Lord and be putting prison for the Lord. And after you have suffered a little while, it's short. I mean, look at this. In comparison to eternity in hell, uh, which goes on forever and ever, think about for us, are those uh, that are suffering, it's a short time in comparison to that. Our life is very short. And uh, so while the, the God of all grace, a little while, the God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, uh, even people that are beheaded, and they'll have their head back on, obviously, in heaven, uh, and they will be restored to a glorious body. All right. Uh, it's so Satan can do those things to people and persecute them and all sorts of things and destroy their body, but they can't destroy their spirit or their soul. There's a scripture that says, fear not him that can destroy, uh, destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy the soul or the spirit. That's God. Uh, and so if a person doesn't receive the Lord and they persecuted others, then they will uh, be destroyed by the Lord in eternal punishment. So don't be afraid of Satan. Uh, yeah, he's looking for people to persecute. and uh, But the thing is, it will be to God's glory and honor. God will reward them. And uh, many will receive the Lord when hearing about it and say, oh, there must be something that's worth dying for. And there is. That, there's someone who is worth dying for. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. So he ends this letter, Peter does. Uh, the, uh, Sylvanus had helped him write it, probably uh, wrote it as uh, Peter dictated it to Sylvanus, was there a faithful brother as I regard him. I have written briefly to you. So this is a short letter. Exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. That's what we're supposed to be like. What to expect. And that God's mercy and grace will be with us through the suffering and persecution. Stand firm in it. Don't deny the Lord like he did to begin with. 
but he stood fast for the Lord when he was confronted with crucifixion himself. Stand firm in it, in your convictions. She who is at Babylon, and they would speak in kind of uh, mysterious terms, so or secretive terms, he's talking about the church in Rome. And he doesn't want necessarily the Ro Roman leadership to know that there, but there's a, always an underground church. There's always a church, even if you're persecuted. In fact, the underground church in China, the Lord says that that church is going to come out from under the ground and be able to be out in the open in the future. And so she who is in Babylon, okay, as uh, they greet you, who is likewise uh, chosen, just like you are uh, Christians that this letter is going to, sends you, you greetings. And so does Mark, my son, and they were, uh, Mark, John Mark was still alive at this time, and he con was considered by Peter, his son, and the Lord. Uh, greet one another with the kiss of love. All right. And we believe uh, that we should be very loving to one another and show it in different ways in different cultures. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. That's for sure. There's wonderful peace because no matter what happens, we will be with the Lord uh, when this life is over. Let's close in a Word of prayer, but remember to pray for those who are suffering for the Lord, even today around the world. Thank you, God, for your love to us. We thank you for your word. We pray that you'll bless it to each and every person uh, as they hear it and as it goes forth. And so we pray these things with thanksgiving in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Lord bless you. We'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.